the Wilkins 350 double check series, 450 also, and the 375 and 475 RP versions of this particular assembly. So let's go ahead and talk about the Wilkins 350 design, which is a double check. Uh, the small size produced in 3 quarter through 2 inch, and the larger sizes 2 and a half through 12 inch. The 3 quarter through 2 inch is rather unique in that the body is brass. The lower section here is brass, but the black part here you see above is actually plastic. And that whole vessel, you take the four bolts off the top, the whole vessel comes out from the top and comes out of the body. That lower portion of the body stays there and the parts come out from the top or attached to the check cover. Once the cover comes out, then the check assemblies can be repaired. Here's a close-up of that body as it stays there. The chassis the, comes out the top with the two check assemblies that slide in there and go back over on top of the body. So this is the 350 series in the 3 quarter through 2 inch. In the larger sizes, 2 and a half through 12, the 350 is made of a ductile iron constructed body. has a single access for the, ch cover, the checks from the cover on the top. It uses a grooved coupling to hold the check cover on top, and both checks come out from the top. They also make what's called a Model 350A version. A is an apple. The A designation means that the end flange of the check body is not flanged like this, but utilizes a grooved coupling end. So if it's a 350A, the end will be a groove coupling here. If it's a 350, it'll be a flanged end body configuration. So the 350 2 and a half through 12 inch design, again, ductile iron body, inlet outlet shutoff valves, single access cover from the top, Groove coupling holds the two checks. The check components are modular. The check components go inside from the cover are held in by a small retainer clip. On the first check side, it's a plastic clip, and on the second check side, it'll be a stainless steel clip. Checks come out. The spring tension does not have to be released for the average repair. Just removing the bolts off the back side of the check assembly does allow you to change the check disc without releasing spring tension. And on certain sizes of the check assembly, they do use what's called a torsion or a twisting type spring mechanism to maintain its check uh, load. They also produce a model 450, which has the same basic check construction as the 350 series, but what's unique about the 450 versus the 350 is the body. Instead of it being a straight horizontal pattern like the 350, the 450 has an N-shaped configuration to allow for a more compact installation location. First check is mounted up here with a single access cover from the top. Second check is removed from that same access cover out the first check. But you'll notice with this small pipe bend here and this fitting here that it gives you that up and down piping configuration of a double check. The two and a half through three inch, they do not have the same construction. They take a standard 350 and just put uh, um, elbows on the downside to give it that up and down orientation. They do produce a detector assembly version of the 350, model 350DA, double check detector assembly. Um, same basic construction of the 350, single access cover for the checks, bypass assembly on the side for the detector assembly. There is a model 450 detect, double check detector assembly, model 450DA, and again produced in 4 through 10 in this body configuration like this for the up and down piping orientation similar to the 450. They produce a reduced pressure principle assembly, model 375 and 475, utilizes a similar check design as we saw in the 350 double checks and 450 double checks. Again, same thing, production began around 2004. Three quarter through two is a little different as some of the other designs, and uh, two and a half through ten, we'll talk about that. The three quarter through two inch is unique in that the first number one shutoff, number two shutoff are integral and built into these two pieces here called the chassis that hold the two ball valves together. The whole check mechanism, which sits in the top here, and the relief mechanism underneath, slides out from the bottom. So the check and relief valve are one piece. The chassis stays in place as this whole vessel comes out from the top and then can be rebuilt outside of that chassis. The chassis stays in the body. Here's a close-up showing that check mechanism, that vessel here that comes out through the center. Check assembly slide through here, relief valve mounts through. So here's the cover, our rolling diaphragm, stem, spring, and relief valve seat. Check seats first, and I mean check assemblies first check and second check slide in through here. This whole mechanism slides back into the chassis for the average repair. 375, two and a half through 10, uses the same check, me similar check mechanisms as we saw in the 350 design with the ductile iron body, single access cover from the top, relief valve is mounted underneath the check body, external high pressure relief valve sensing line underneath. They also have the model 375A version, A meaning that the end of the body is not flanged like you see in this picture. The A body has a grooved coupling end on the outside of the check body. The 375 check assembly, similar to the 350, 
horizontal body, single access cover from the top. Uh, groove coupling holds the checks inside the body. The checks are modular. Both checks come out from the top. The check mechanisms, like the 350 series, also can uh, be repaired without replacing the spring tension, without releasing the spring tension. Four bolts on the sizes um, remove that check assembly. The disc holder off so you can change the check disc. There's a single bolt that holds a two and a half and three inch. The relief valve of the 375, here's the check, I mean the relief valve body. Uh, mounts underneath the check body, relief valve seat, uh, seals with an O-ring, relief valve spring, disc, relief valve stem, rolling diaphragm, diaphragm retainer, and relief valve cover. And that's the parts of the relief valve of the 375. They did produce a model 475 reduced pressure assembly and the normal end pattern configuration is what the 475 was like the 450 with the special units of the uh, flanges on the inlet and outlet gave it that up and down piping configuration single access cover from the top takes both checks out through there you could rotate the second check 180 degrees and have it in a vertical oriented up orientation so that the water could come up travel sideways and back up through the top for vertically oriented rp which had some installation applications and the rotation of that downside did give you some flexible orientations like these like you see in the drawings for that particular design of the 470. They did produce a detector assembly in the 375 detector, reduced pressure detector assembly, utilizing the 375 as the main valve and the 975 as the bypass assembly. There was also a 475 detector assembly, reduced pressure detector assembly with that end pattern configuration or the orientation where it could be vertically oriented like this. So 350, 375, 450, 475. The 300 series 350 being horizontal, uh, double checks, the 375 being horizontal RPs, the 450 version being the up and down configuration on the um, double check, the 450 being the up and down or end pattern configuration on the RP 475 series. They did produce the small sizes, three quarters through two, which was a little different construction than the two and a half through 12. So let's go ahead and disassemble them and take a look and see what they look like. Here's some pictures of the 350 and the small sizes, meaning three quarters through two. As I mentioned, this plastic piece, this vessel sits inside this chassis mechanism. And when it's piped in, obviously your inlet side, outlet side here is connected hard piped. But the whole check mechanisms come out from the top in that piece for a rebuild. The R375 version, kind of same idea. For piping configurations, the piping stays solid on the shutoff valves. This chassis, which goes around the two ball valves, and this whole relief valve and check assembly comes out from the top for the repair, which just leaves this chassis mechanism and the ball valves in the piping system, and all the rest comes out through the top for the repair. On the 2.5 through 12 inch sizes on the double check and the ten inch, up to 10 inch sizes on the RP, here's a cutaway of what it looks like. This is the A configuration body, meaning that the end of the body has a groove coupling, not a flange. And the check assembly, your first check here on the left, second check on the right, are held in. It's hard to tell, but I'll show you when we take it apart. There's a little clip that sits right here and goes right down the side of the body here that holds that first check in place. It's a plastic piece that slips in there, and that's what holds the check into the body, this small little clip. On the second check, there are two spring clips, and here's the top clip, and there's the bottom clip that holds the second check in place. Relief valve is mounted underneath. External relief valve sensing line for our high pressure sensing line closes it. And uh, relief valve stem assembly, very similar to the 975, which we've taken apart. We'll go ahead and take that apart and show you what the relief valve looks like on that unit. And this is what the cutaway with the single access cover for the checks from the top. So let's go ahead and take one apart now. Here's our three quarter inch 350 and inlets test, inlet this way, outlet that way. As I said, there is a chassis underneath that holds it. Four bolts on the top, remove that. The entire check assembly comes out in one piece, O-ring on both ends as it seals inside the check. To rebuild it, pushing in line with the check design brings out the second check, first check, and the body just on the side like this to rebuild the check assemblies. There's a small screwdriver slot that you can see right here. Right there on both checks. So it's there for a reason to help you disassemble that because the check, if you notice, it just turns, there's two pieces holding that check assembly together. So to get at the check disc holder, we're gonna insert our screwdriver in that small little slot make a small little rotation, which will release the spring tension, check poppet disc holder, check seat. Check disc is not replaceable on this. You change the entire poppet on the 350 series. Reassembly is gonna be just the reverse, just like this. Pushing it back in place, twist it, make sure that it's sealed. 
And same with the second check, remove that, replace the, the check disc holder. Notice that it's guided on the side right here, very close. You can see these little fins. These are the guides for this check disc holder. See that? That's what guides it through its travel straight up and down. Reassembly is just the reverse, like this. Check assemblies back into the body. Have our first check in first, second check second. You'll notice if you try to put the second check in first, the first check won't go. So first check first, second check second. Follow the arrows. O-rings on the end. Check covers. Go ahead and tighten those down, like so. That's our Wilkins Model 350 in the small, small meaning three-quarter through two-inch sizes. Here's an actual 375 assembly. Here's our number one test cock, number one shutoff, test cocks two, three, and four, outlet shutoff. As I mentioned, there is a chassis mechanism, two flat pieces of uh, brass that hold the vessel in the center. You can see the relief valve and the checks on the top. So for the proper repair of this assembly, what we're gonna do is remove these two screws first over here. And right on the top, it says remove to repair. And when we take those two screws out, it's like a little V-shaped wedge. It's going to come out in one piece like that. What that allows us to do is move the check assemblies now by sliding them back in line with pressure. Towards the pressure, I mean, the, ch the whole vessel will come out in one piece. In other words, this piece slides across here like this. It comes all the way off just like that. And it's actually sealed by an O-ring which sits right there. And you can see the O-ring slot right there. And there's the O-ring it sits on. So this slides over that slot with the O-ring in the center just like that. Okay. Here's the part that we're actually going to repair. Because as I said, this part stays in the plumbing system and doesn't have to be removed for the average repair. Now, check assemblies. We're going to do first pushing in from the outlet. You'll need something like a small socket extension bar, which helps just to get a little leverage. The O-ring, first check, second check assembly will come out. Notice the check assemblies are different diameters. Notice that the body is cone-shaped so that you can't put the checks in wrong. You've got to put the check assemblies in properly because otherwise they just won't fit going back into the body. But anyway, so there's our first check. There's our second check. Let's talk about the check assemblies first, and this is the mounting O-ring, one on both sides. Let's talk about the check assemblies first. Check assemblies come out in a modular, meaning that it comes apart in, like this, sealed by an O-ring. The O-ring sits in the center of the stem disc, uh, I mean the seat right there, just like that. For proper repair, remove the O-ring, proper lubricant. To disassemble the check assembly, you're going to grab both ends of it, and with a small eighth turn rotation, release the spring tension. You have your check seat your disc holder with a single screw that holds the disc into the disc holder, check spring, spring retainer. First check, same thing, quarter turn rotation, check seat, disc holder, check spring, spring retainer. So you'll notice the parts, rubber discs, springs, spring retainer. Parts are not interchangeable between the checks, meaning the seats, meaning the disc spring retainers and the springs, obviously. Reassembly is gonna be just the reverse. Go ahead and pushing it back together, that rotation like that, replace the check disc, back together. We're on the 350 series on the small one. We had to snap this together, but on this larger, I mean on the RP size, it actually pushes together and then twists just like that. Okay, we'll put the checks aside on the, for a second. Go ahead and look at the relief valve. Relief valve is mounted underneath the check body. Plastic construction, we've got six screws we have to remove on the back side of the relief valve. Where our slight spring tension will be underneath there, so hang on to it when you get to your last bolt. Once it comes out, cover will come off. Relief valve stem assembly, relief valve spring. Relief valve seat is inside the body. It screws into the body, can be replaced if necessary. Just like on the 975 series, we have a small little breather hole on the end of that relief valve cover, which is really important for the working of those valves, making sure that that's open and clear. So we want to take a look at that, make sure nothing's dripping or coming out of there. Once I have the cover, the stem will be, come off in one piece. There is an O-ring um, 
on the end of the relief valve cover. And just like the 975, that is a guide. It guides it on the back half. So that area where that um, breather hole is, is open to atmosphere. And as the stem moves back and forth across there, it breathes as the stem moves back and forth. High pressure sensing line comes through the cover, through here, which comes out through the cover right there. And that brings out our high pressure sensing line right there. Now, low pressure sensing line comes from the body inside here, so it is a hydraulically balanced relief valve. We're utilizing a rolling diaphragm, relatively small roll, easy, and there's our relief valve disc. Disassemble the relief valve stem. One screw holds the stem together, similar again to the 975 relief valve. RV plunger, relief, rolling diaphragm, upper plunger, relief valve disc, assembly bolt. Reassembly is going to be just the reverse. Back together. Now because we've split this into two pieces and we're tightening across that, that rolling diaphragm, this screw has to be very tight. Tightness of that has to do with the working of that particular diaphragm. Very, very carefully so. Reassembly, make sure our seat's back in. For the average repair, it does not have to be removed. There's an O-ring on the back side. I mean, it's not a O-ring, but pushed in on the back side, but there is an O-ring so that you can get the seat in and out. Relief valve seat, relief valve stem, relief valve cover. Now, the O-ring on the top of this stem goes just like this and sits inside the cover. So your best bet is to place that into the cover first Fold your rolling diaphragm down so that it's mounted inside here. Stroke it back and forth, make sure it moves easily and breathes across the back side of that. Now, make sure you replace your O-ring on the high pressure sensing line, reattaching the relief valve, put your six bolts back in. We want to tighten it evenly. We have a relatively softer piece, soft piece of plastic that can be bent if we're not too careful. So when you go to tighten those six bolts, tighten them in the center first and then back and forth, making sure we have it tight all the way around. Now let's put the check assemblies back in. Again, check assemblies are different diameters, so you put them in the you know, right direction. You can't put them in incorrectly, meaning you can't put the first check in first because it won't fit, so you've got to put the second check in first. First check in, second, having it into the body all the way to, down, compressed inside that chassis. We have our O-rings, which go one on this side, the second one on that side. Now we're going to put it back into our chassis body. We slide this stem all the way over so that we have the full open area, sliding, chassis in, sliding it into the chassis from the top. Notice that there's two cradles, one on the bottom here on the brass side and a second one on the plastic side right here. So that that, when we go to put the vessel inside, it's going to nestle right on here and right on this spot right there, right there. So putting it in here like this, getting it nestled into that area, sliding my little retainer over taking that little V-clip that holds in place, just pushing this in here, two screws through here. As I tighten that, that make sure it's sealed on those O-rings on both sides, like that. And that's our model 375 in the small sizes, small size meaning three quarter through two inch. We want to talk about the inch and a quarter through two inch in the 350 double check and 375 RPs, which are quite different than the smaller three quarter and one, which we've just done. Here's the RP version of 375. The double check is similar, obviously, without the relief valve. But I want to talk about the valve itself. Here we have an inch and a half. Same as the small, we have the integral ball valves, meaning the ball valves are built into this chassis mechanism, which you see in the brass version here. 
and the test cocks for the test cocks two, three, and four are mounted on the top of the body from the top. Relief valve, as you see, is mounted underneath in the RP version, meaning 375. And the way this is designed, like the small three-quarter and one, is that this, they call it a vessel. This vessel mechanism is designed to come out in one piece so that it can be repaired. The chassis stays attached to the plumbing system and stays in there for the average repair, just the vessel comes out. So let's go ahead and take this apart and see what it looks like inside on the inch and a quarter through two. Again, a little different than on the small three-quarter and one. On this one, we're going to have four bolts holding the vessel into the chassis. And in this case, having the four bolts come out like this. In this way, the vessel is going to come out in one piece. So it comes out. This was in the body of the piping system like that. This would just lift out like this for the repair. Again, this piece would stay in the plumbing for the average repair. Let's go ahead and take the vessel apart now. This is our check mechanisms up here, relief valve on the bottom here. First thing we're going to do is remove our inlet flange, which comes off sealed by an O-ring that you see right here. Put that on the side. Then you can see what the check mechanism is looking in from the number one check side inward. Here's the number two check looking down in here. So what seals it into that uh, chassis is the O-ring on the side of the body here and on the side right there of our inlet flange. And that's what seals it inside there. Anyway, now to get the checks out, what we're going to do is have to apply pressure from the back number two check side, pushing out on the check valves. They'll come out first check, second check, like that. And what we're going to see is the checks are modular. So inside the body, what we're going to see is this. If it was a cutaway, you'd be looking at the two checks like this. Second check with the second check O-ring, first check module with the first check module O-ring inside the body. Notice that they're slightly tapered. You can see that taper on there. That's so that you cannot put them back together incorrectly. In other words, the first check is the largest, which goes here. And the second check is smaller, it goes in here. But if you tried to reverse it, it wouldn't work because the first check would never go all the way back. Anyway, so those are the check modules as they would sit inside the body, interlocked as you see right there. Let's put this on the side for a minute and we'll just do the check valves first. So second check, first check. The checks are a modular construction. Disassemble, grabbing both ends of it. A little eighth turn rotation will release the spring tension. You'll have your spring retainer, your spring your disc holder and your seat and the seat o-ring. One screw holds the disc into the disc holder so to replace the disc you would just tighten this down, loosen the screw, change the disc like this. Disc is symmetrical meaning that it can be turned over if you haven't had, didn't have parts to replace but obviously you should replace the disc if you're rebuilding it. Reassembly is going to be the reverse disc holder, second check spring, and second check spring retainer. Now the parts are not interchangeable between the first and second check because of that dimension change. Many times the disc holders and things are interchangeable, but the, the, this design you want to keep them separate. First check is a little different, so I want to take a look at it besides having a different uh, retainer on the back side. Same eight turn rotation will release the spring tension for the average repair. Spring retainer, spring disc holder and seat. One screw holds the disc and the disc holder, symmetrical disc again. Reassembly is going to be just the re oh, and then the one piece is the spacer. On the first check, this is one piece that's unique to the first check, is this little spacer on the back side. So it controls how it travels through its uh, stroke and has to be sitting on the back side of the first check. There is not one on the second check. Reassembly is going to be the reverse. Now we're going to go ahead and install Check the disc holder together, and first check assembly. So inside the body, what you're looking at again is a first check with a second check that interlocks. You can see that mechanism, that how it moves together just like that. Let's put the check aside for a side for now and take a look at the relief valve. We'll look at the checks when we're ready to put it back into the body. So our check body, which obviously is empty at this point. And here's where you can see your high pressure relief valve sensing line right there for the relief valve, which goes down this side. You'll see the wider side versus the narrower side on this. And that's our high pressure sensing line going through here, down through the middle here. 
So disassemble the relief valve. The first thing you're going to see are three bolts on the back side here. Removing those three bolts. They're long, about an inch and a half, two inches long. Come off like this. Once the bolts come off, you want to grab the entire relief valve body and pull it off from the check body. In other words, you're going to do this type of an action. So it all comes off in one piece like this. What's going to be left is what you see here is your relief valve disc. Notice that the relief valve disc is held in by one screw. One screw goes in, you can release that, put the new relief valve disc. Most designs, the check seat um, stationary and the disc moves up and down. In this design, the relief valve disc stays stationary and the seat, which is right in here, moves up and down through its travel. So the relief valve disc sits right there, one screw holds in the body, removing the one screw, replace the relief valve disc. Let's look at the relief valve body now. So this is what we pulled off from the bottom. Once we pulled it off, we were exposed to four more bolts we see here. So these four bolts have to come out next. O-ring mounts the relief valve body to the bottom of the check body that you can see right there. So that O-ring would be sitting on there just like that, and that's what mounts that to the relief valve body. And I'll get these last two bolts on. I'll take it apart. Again, O-ring sitting in here. The relief valve body comes off here. And this leaves us with our relief valve cover and with our relief valve stem. Now you see the diaphragm grabbing that, pulling the stem up from here. Relief valve stem comes out in one piece. On the end there will be a stem uh, plunger o-ring. This is called a plunger. This is actually our relief valve seat right here. So we want to be very, very careful because as I said, the seat moves up and down while the seat, the disc stays stationary inside the body. So now I've got the stem assembly come out and the relief valve cover. Let's go ahead and take our relief valve stem apart. There's going to be a stem o-ring. Back area is called, a, upper stem is called a plunger, our relief valve diaphragm, and this is our relief valve seat right here. There's this piece of spring guide which sits in the middle which gives us a little protection so we don't hit the face of the seat, but this is something you want to be aware of. That is your relief valve seat right here. We mentioned earlier that the relief valve disc stays stationary while the seat moves in and out. So now we have to disassemble this to change our diaphragm. We're going to want to take a, notice there's a hex on the back side which allows for a large um, crescent style wrench or a vise. And we're going to grip it on the, here by some uh, multi-grip pliers or something gripping around the outer edge of this. We want to make sure we don't nick the seat. So I'm going to go ahead and release that. There will be spring tension from the relief valve spring inside. So our upper plunger comes out, relief valve diaphragm, spring, seat, and our spring retainer. And the assembly is going to be just the reverse. There's no rubber parts here because that's our seat, as I mentioned. What you want to do is take, remember this is our relief valve seat, so we're going to have to reassemble this. We have to place this in a down fashion. Obviously, we don't want to stick this on something dirty or um, that could nick that seat. So you want to have something soft, clothish, uh, a little bit of rubber is good so it holds it in place so it grips when you put it back together. Relief valve spring, our relief valve diaphragm goes over here. And now we want to compress that relief valve spring and catch those threads on the bottom like that. And once we have it caught, go ahead and tighten it down. This will be a gasket seal, meaning there's no o-ring assistance, so it has to be very tight. So get your wrench on both sides, tightening that down so that you have a positive seal across that diaphragm stem o-ring. Now we're ready to put the stem back into the body. Make sure we line up the high pressure sensing line through the body, which has an o-ring sitting right here. Make sure our stem moves in and out. Now we're going to go ahead and install the body. This is our cover. This is our body. Installing the body over like this. There's our high pressure sensing o-ring. So now we want to take our four bolts to attach the 
relief valve, body to the relief valve cover. And make sure you get through the diaphragm without damaging it, of course, like that. Tighten these four. There is an O-ring between that body, so we have an O-ring seal to assist. The diaphragm is not sealing these two bodies. That O-ring that was that was on the really felt body cover here is what seals that. Once those are tight, our really felt body and cover are ready to go back onto our check body, which is sealed by an O-ring like this. And we also have a high pressure sensing O-ring right there. Now we're going to go ahead and attach our relief valve body to the check body. Three bolts hold that mechanism to the check body. Got to make sure we have a proper tightness on those three bolts so we don't get leakage there. Now, with our relief valve uh, tightened up, we're going to install our check valves back inside the body. Again, first check, second check. Notice the interlocking of them. Again, they're not interchangeable because of the dimension. First and second check are going to go in, pushing a bolt in so that that O-ring seals on the check body. Our body flange goes on next, which in place here and properly lubricate the O-rings of course it means the O-ring has to be pulled out and greased all the way around 360 degrees before it's put back on. Now we're ready to bring our chassis mechanism back and this will just fit in the middle of the chassis like this. Obviously this stays installed for the plumbing system like that. Our four bolts would now go on here holding the vessel on to the chassis. I'm just going to put the two on for now, but there's four that hold it as you can see. Anyway, on our inch and a quarter through two inch, 375, that's the differences between that and of course the small three quarter to one inch, which was a lot different. The relief valve being dramatically different, meaning that the relief valve uh, seat stays, moves up and down while the relief valve disc stays stationary. Uh, vessel through the middle, same mechanism as we saw in the small ones. This is our 375 on, for the RP and our 350 for the double check. Here we have a cutaway of a 4 inch 375, we'll go through a repair process. Single access cover for the checks on the top, utilizing a grooved coupling. Two bolts hold the cover on top. Like this, removing the gasket, cover comes off in one piece, exposes the two check assemblies, our first check and our second check. The checks are held in by a clip, and you can see here this moving piece right there as I kind of wiggle it. What you're going to be looking at is, I'll tip it back, is this right here. So you're going to see two little knobs on the end of your clip. In other words, looking inside that, what I'm looking at are these two pieces right here, allowing me to grip those two clips, squeeze them, and pull it out to let the check assembly. In other words, that's what's holding that check in the body. So I'm going to go ahead and squeeze it. Remove the clip from the check in one piece, just like that. Clip will come out in one piece, hopefully one piece. It's a good idea to have extra clips when you are rebuilding those because sometimes they do break after they've been in the water passageway a while. First check will come out in one piece just like that. Once the clip is out, the O-ring is what seals that check inside the body. Second check's a little different. It's held in by two clips. And the two clips that are holding the check assembly in look like this. They're a stainless steel clip right here. See there and see here. So to go ahead and remove these, I'm going to pull up on the spring, retainer in the center, squeeze it. In other words, it's sitting in there like this. 
by squeezing that spring, it releases it, the top one first, then the bottom clip comes out next, which allows me to pull the second check assembly out of the body just like that. So to kind of look on it on the outside of the body, here's our first check, here's our second check. The clip holds the first check in like this, wraps around the check assembly, sits in this little slot right there inside the body, holding it in place. The original version of this clip was stainless steel when it first came out, and they had problems with the stainless steel clip wearing away, moving back and forth, and actually wedging or uh, rubbing off the epoxy coating. So they went to a softer plastic material, hopefully eliminating some of those friction issues they had. Large O-ring on the outside seals it. First check has a little handle to help grip it, putting it back in. Second check, same story, O-ring. So when the check comes out, the two clips that hold it in place look like this. Show you what it looks like outside of the body. You have two clips, two that sit on the bottom half. They sit on the two ledges where the spring sits, just like that. And the top ones sit on the same lip, just like that, holding them in the little slot inside the body of the assembly. So now that we've got the check assemblies out, we have to rebuild them. To rebuild the checks, there are four bolts on the back side. You do not have to release the spring tension for the check assembly for the repair. Check springs are not replaceable in the field, meaning that if you have to replace check springs, you're going to replace the entire module. All you do is take the check disc off, new check disc like that, and rebuilding is just a matter of changing that flat disc. Check spring, as I say, stays contained for the average repair and does not have to be replaced. Reassembling, as I say, just the reverse. Line up your bolts, O-rings on the back side of each of the bolts. Go ahead and put your bolts together. First check, you can see the four bolts there, same story. You do not release the spring tension for the average repair but by removing those bolts from the back side, all four of them, allows you to rebuild the check. Putting it back together is going to be the reverse where the second check is going to have to go in first into the body. Important to push it in all the way over, getting those cam arms on that horizontal fashion like this. That way when we put our two clips, it's sitting horizontal from the top. Make sure we've got our check assembly all the way in. Now we're going to go ahead and put that spring clip in. Here's what that second check one of them looks like. Putting it in from the top. Get one leg in to the side. Compress the spring down on the other side. Pushing in just like that. Making sure the spring clips all the way in. Top clip just like the bottom. Get the first leg in. Compress the spring around. Push it up into the slot. Make sure fully in. Make sure the check's working properly like that, that it's held in there properly. First check. First check, we have the advantage of the little handle. Putting in place. So the check, just like that. Keeping the handle on the horizontal makes it easier getting it in and out next time you're repairing it. The clamp. Now it goes in around the check assembly, starting it on the one side, walking it around underneath all the way around, compressing it in that slot, making sure the two clips are together on the top and the check assembly is held in very tight. So those are the two check assemblies for the 350 or the Model 375. Let's rebuild the relief valve now on our 375. The relief valve body can stay attached for the average repair depending on how much room you have to work against the relief valve here. I'm going to take it off of the body just so you can see it a little easier. Our relief valve sensing line, external high pressure sensing line comes off. Two bolts hold the relief valve body onto the check body. And as I say, for the average repair, you don't necessarily have to take it off. It's an option. You can remove it if you can't get at the cover easily. Okay, here's a cutaway showing our relief valve. Just as we've seen in the 975 and our smaller 375, we have a breather hole in the cover of that relief valve. Make sure that's open. Make sure it's not weeping water or leaking or something, anything like that. It gives us an indication of what's wrong. Repair it. We're going to remove our relief valve cover bolts. There will be spring tension underneath as we take our bolts off. So hang on to the cover. As the cover comes off, We'll have our relief valve cover, our relief valve stem, 
that same O-ring on the edge of that stem as we've seen before, our relief valve disc, relief valve spring, and our relief valve seat, which presses into the body, just held in by the friction of the O-ring. Rebuilding the relief valve stem, there is one bolt. Move the bolt. Will allow us to relief valve plunger, relief valve rolling diaphragm, upper plunger, disc, and disc retainer. Rebuilding is a matter of replacing the disc, putting back together our new rolling diaphragm, our two pieces of the relief valve stem, which is called a plunger. That's the name Wilkins decided to call it. New relief valve O-ring for the stem here. That's our guide, which goes through the cover. Again, we want to inspect our cover, making sure we don't have any problems with the cover. In other words, if it's corroded or damaged in this cover, when that stem sits there, it'll leak right across there. Even though the relief valve will be working properly, this is one of those nuisance drips that can happen if the cover is bad. So it's important that you inspect that cover, make sure that that air bore area where that co the stem is going to sit is, work is perfectly smooth. Reassembly, relief valve spring first, our relief valve diaphragm. We do not have to line up a relief valve sensing line. We saw that that was an external hose. Low pressure sensing line comes through the body, through the inside here. So reassembly is going to be like this. Get our bolts in place. relief valve mounts by an o-ring so if we took it off we're going to go ahead and replace that o-ring reattach our relief valve body to our check body like this now I want to show you one thing before I reattach the relief valve sensing line if you'll notice in the water passageway there's this small little stainless steel tube. It's what's called a pitot tube. Because of the check design that we have through this particular valve, it is possible to develop a high velocity as the water travels past here. It hits that check and creates a little turbulence around here. That if we had trouble with turbulence or velocity across this point, this is our high pressure sensing line that goes to our relief valve right down here. So to make sure we don't have a problem with um, the velocity actually siphoning the water off the top of our relief valve uh, high pressure sensing line, they've put what's called a pitot tube. And what the pitot tube makes sure is that the maximum pressure is generated here to the top of that relief valve. And as the water flows through there, it makes sure that any quick velocity or turbulence isn't affected by that particular part by putting the optimum pressure on our relief valve cover. Check cover goes back on next. Gasket goes first. It's a good idea to put a good lubricant over these gaskets. They go on a lot easier. Gasket on all the way. Cover next. Pull. Gasket up over the cover. Exposing our groove on the bottom. Getting our groove coupler. It's a lot easier if you put it in from the sides like this. That way you don't have to worry about trying to hit the test cocks as you're pulling it in. Get the cover couplings on over the gasket. Insert our bolts. Remember, a groove coupling only works when it's completely compressed. That means these two edges have to come together completely. Have it together. And catch our bolts. Tighten our two bolts up. That's our Model 375 reduced pressure assembly. And again, the corresponding 350 backflow assembly double check version from uh, Wilkins, produced in sizes 2.5 through 12 inch on double check and 2.5 through 10 inch on the reduced pressure assemblies. For a point of clarity, here's what the 3 inch check looks like, held in by those same type of clips, but only one bolt on the back side or nut on the back side is removed to change the check disc, as opposed to four as we saw in the 4 inch.
But when you get into the large sizes, the 8, 10 inch style, the checks aren't held in by a clip but are bolted into the flange, like into the body like that. Same mechanism, you remove the bolts off the back, take the cover, change the check disc. You do not have to release the spring tension, even on the 10 and 12 inch checks like this one. So I just wanted to show you the larger ones are bolted in. Smaller one has one nut that holds the disc into the disc holder, but the check mechanisms are basically the same type of construction. Bolted in, held in by clips, single bolt or four bolts. That's the check mechanisms that you're going to come across.